Hello, welcome. So we finished the gluing down of our project. So if you haven't seen this part before, this is part two of a two-parter. This is a magazine print that we pulled off of the jelly plate. And then I took jelly plate backgrounds, tore them up, and added them around into this. So now I want to finish some details. It's had overnight to dry. It's been completely covered in some gel matte medium. So it's nice and, and dry and matte and it, this is looking great. So I've got some colored pencils. I've got some gelatos. I've got my woodies and we're just going to see about getting these decorated. But I'm going to start out and I'm hoping that I can get some good results with my colored pencils. So I'm just going to set the, the woodies. I've got these gelatos. I'm going to set those aside and see where we can go with the colored pencils to get us started. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to make her a little bit more highlighted or featured. I've got blues close enough, to, closer to her. So I'm going to grab this tray and see if I see any blues. I don't even see any blues in there. And so this tray, let's try this one, which is Imperial Violet. This one is Light Cerulean. This one is Peacock Blue. This one is True Blue. So let's try these and see how we can work to highlight her a little bit. So I'm gonna start out light. I can always go darker. So the lightest one of this was the light cerulean blue. I'm just gonna go around some of these. Yeah, they are working just fine over the gel medium. Now the gel medium, it's a little bit bumpy lumpy because this is a heavy gel medium, but that's okay. It's smooth enough that I don't feel like I'm ruining my pencils. Some things are just too sandpapery and I don't want to just grind away my colored pencils. And let's go down here. And I'm just trying to kind of unify these with an outline and see Okay, so if we look at the one side versus the other side, do you see a difference between this side and this side? Because I sure do. I think this is a, a good way to get started. And I, this is, I'm not doing anything precision or exact. I'm just getting some color between the light space and this first row of the jelly prints that we added around the edge. We just I just took some jelly prints and I picked some colors that I liked and then I just tore them into kind of postage size and just started laying them down sort of mosaic like. Okay, I like that well. Now what I'd like to do is incorporate some of this color into her clothing and I know it's not real easy to see, but I think I'm gonna just give her a bit of an outline. Like this here is a big collar. So I'm just gonna outline this collar. And here's the collar on this side. And then her coat or jacket or whatever is sort of coming this way. Okay, and now we can sort of add whatever colors that we might want, but I'm gonna stick with the blue theme right now because I, I like keeping in. Now there is a little bit of pink in here too, so I wouldn't be opposed to adding a pink. So this color is called blush pink. And there is some reddish, pinkish, a little bit on her already. So let's put a little of this blush pink. And I'm just going to put it where some of these white highlights are. Not all of them. 
it's kind of the reflections and see what happens when you do magazine gel prints. Some of the ink, or we were using acrylic paint on the gel plate, some of that acrylic paint clings to the ink that's already there and some doesn't. The magazine acts as a resist. So you get this sort of a, oh, grainy, and I mean different, different colors, different magazine pages, and I don't know if it has to even do with the particular ink that was used for that particular color. They all just show up a little bit different. But I am just adding, and I think this line, it's, I think it's a bag, and I think her hand is here. Okay. So let's grab a color that can be her bag. Maybe this color, which is the peacock blue. And again, I realize that these details are a little bit difficult for you to see, but Hopefully, as I work on it, you'll be able to see it just a little bit better. And this is her hand under here. I think I'm going to just lightly color in this bag. I'm going to darken. Here's under the, the flap of the bag. And I think I might even take a darker color yet under here. Go back to my peacock blue. That's true blue. I was using peacock blue. That's violet. For crying out loud. There we go. There we go. All right. Let's add some of this back. Now, I am not trying to bring this picture back to photorealism at all. Never. Who knows, I may add some elements that weren't in here. Period. But for right now, I'm just trying to get some color into this print. But I don't want to lose the fact that it is a print. So how are you today? I hope that you're doing well. I hope that you're doing some arting or some crafting today. That would be great. I'm working in my large Dilutions journal and this is my second Dilutions journal. I've already filled one it took me a few years, but it was great. Great enough that I have another one. Now I'm just taking a cotton bud or a Q-tip and I'm just blurring these lines. And when you're working on top of gel medium, it really is easier to blur these lines. And now I'm working it right into the violet color that's kind of a shadowy color. Okay, there's her purse. I think that came out great. Now I'm going to fill in her hand and I've got, let's see, this is a, a Sienna Brown. Let's see, now I don't want Tuscan Red and I don't want that dark purple, this one. And this one is burnt ochre, and this one is dark brown. Okay, that will give us three. And I'm gonna, I'm just gonna lay these blues up here and that one pink. All right, I'm gonna start out with the burnt ochre, which is really kind of a yellowy color. And just work this on her, her wrist. And then this is her hand. and her fingers.
and that's her cup. And I'm going to take the little bit darker brown, shade this in a little. And then I'm going to take my cotton bud again. Okay. Okay, that looks good. Very good. All right, now I'm going to give her a little bit of color. good and maybe just her eyebrow here her eyebrow here and then I'm just going to indicate her eyes Yep. I'm just highlighting her nose a little bit. And then let's get a color. Well, a color in her ear. Going back to the ochre color. Still filling in. But can you see how the magazine just gives us a hint, but then we are doing our own thing. We're not, we're not trying to confiscate this photo as our own, not at all. But we're turning it into our own. That's what we're doing. But as I said at the beginning of the first video, I've seen many people take their jelly plates and do these magazine transfers with different levels of, of satisfaction and success, but I've not seen anybody use them. And that's what I wanted to do. I thought, well, this is a lot of work and we're creating all these masterpieces, but we're not... I just didn't see anybody doing anything with them. Okay, this color is crimson red. And I'm not scrubbing this deep in. And I do want her upper lip to definitely be darker than her lower lip. Okay, I'm going to give her a little blush on each side. Give it a little rub. I'm liking this. Mm hmm Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Now, I have this Prismacolor and it's metallic gold. And she does have, again, I know you've probably can't see it she does have a necklace on so I'm just gonna fill in it's just barely showing she also has some large earrings on so I'm just gonna give those the metallic gold and I really can't say that I'm seeing a whole lot of metallic going on but that's okay that's okay all right 
I may just leave her like that. Let's just keep working on the rest of this and see where it takes us. And these are the colors that I've used so far. And I really don't want to extend out my palette too much further. I, I think you can just make things look confusing. I'm not going to count the gold because that's just a couple of highlights here and there. So for our outer edge, let's get this crimson. Is that what? Yeah. And I'm going to do not, not this row and not the newspaper row, but the outside row. I'm going to work on it with a little bit of this crimson red and see where that takes us. Again, I don't want to lose the whole flavor of the mosaic and the individual pieces that are here. But I want to enhance them. It sort of, to me, looks like she's maybe looking out of an arched window. And I really like that. Tell me what you see. But that's that's just the vibe that I that I get from this. It wasn't my plan, but I like that it turned out that way. I like windows. I think windows spur on curiosity. I think it makes a person wonder what else is going on in that building. Why is she standing there? What's in her purse? Is it even a purse? Is it a is it a bag containing something else? Who knows? Maybe there's a ticket in there. Maybe she's maybe she's on her way someplace or maybe she's on her way home. I just love asking myself all those kinds of questions when I see a door or a window. I like that. Okay, I'm going to take this red and I'm going to bring it out. I'm going to bring this down. And I'm going to work on some of these separate little pieces. I've purposely not done anything yet with the green squares because I'm, I think I want to frame those and I want it to be the the last thing I do I want everything else to be in place and then I'll kind of close it all up with those frames around the green parts okay that's good I'm going to switch to that mm, that purpley color Let's see if we have something more on the line of a magenta. And this is Tuscan Red, Dark Purple. What's this? Terracotta. No, no, no. Hmm. I thought I had something like a magenta. It may be in another place, but I, I don't think so. All right, what are you? We'll try dark purple. Because there is kind of some purpley pink in here as well. So I'm just going to add some of this here and there. Yeah, I like that fine. Have you gotten your gel plates out yet? Have you dug them out from your cabinets and shelves and dusting them off and see what you can do with it? I always recommend keeping the clamshells that they come in and just using that as their forever storage because it keeps them nice and flat, it keeps the dust out, and it's just handy in my opinion, is very handy. 
and you don't want your gel plate to get, you know, dusty and no matter how wonderful of a housekeeper you are, little bits and things just get in there and there's nothing you can much do about it. Okay, let's move this over this way so that I can add some of the purple in here. I hope this is inspirational that it might encourage you to use uh, one of your magazine prints if you've got some in the art journal collage. It's fun and I think it's very satisfying. I'm just adding some more purple here. All right, now, I think what I want to do next, and we're not going to do a whole lot more to this. I do think I want to highlight her hair. She's got beautiful hair. I want a very dark blue. Next, violet. Let's bring this over to the light. And let's see. I have an indigo color. What are you? Indigo. And can you see where the little white bits are? Well, I'm just going to put some of this blue in here. I'm making some little curly cues on the edge. You know, those little edge hairs. I may give her a little bit of baby hair right here. Like that. And give some little little indication of some curls on the edge. All right, now I'm going to get my little blending tool and take away the sharp edges. I like this little hint of blue in her hair, kind of featuring her hair a little bit. It's Her hair's beautiful. All right, I'm going to take that same blue and see if I can just Give her a little eyeliner. I like that. I'm gonna take, is this the, the Sienna? Let's see if I can just add a little bit of a, a little bit more of a nose shape. Yes, I like that real well. Just darkening this a little. Good, good, good. Well, I like this. I think this is good. Yep. She needs a, another punch of color. Now, I've got here all the colors. And I don't want to use crimson. That's for sure. This is the indigo, a little too dark. The peacock blue, I know what that's like. The true blue, these are lighter. What's this? Imperial violet. Let's try that. And I'm going to fill in the negative space around her. Now, this may be a disaster, or it may turn out good. I hope it turns out good. I think it will. But, 
just never know till you get it done. But you know, don't be afraid. It's your art journal. It's here to enjoy. Let's just rub this out a bit. Okay. So we're still at the end of August. Plenty of sun. Uh, we may have had some rain overnight. I'm really not quite sure if it was rain or a heavy dew. But... Uh, We've had a little bit of clouds come and go, but it's mostly been sunny. My sister's still here, and we're having so much, and she helped me tremendously in getting some things done that, you know, I just had to live here for a while and kind of see where I wanted things, and she helped me move some heavy furniture around and got some things off the floor and up on the walls, and I'm just, it's just looking so much more like a home, and I like that. I like this purple. I think that's good. I like it better than having such a such a light background around her. Okay, now I'm just going to be working on these frames. And I had a mind of honestly just framing them out in black, in black Sharpie. And I think I may just stick with that idea. Let's see what we think. Am I where you can see me? This one is trying to die. Let's get another one. I'm not even going to wrestle with it. There we go. This is why I like to leave it overnight for these acrylic products to really cure because you will mess up your alcohol markers and things if you're dragging it through acrylic products. Gel medium, as I said, that is just acrylic paint with no pigment. So we definitely don't want to put that on our Sharpie markers. It is very hard to correct it if you get that, if you can at all. And I know that I've thrown away markers just because they got dragged through the acrylic. But overnight, that really cures it. Now, do I think you always have to wait overnight? No, I don't think so. But this was a heavy coat of gel medium. So, and, and lots of layers of paper. So I just felt like, not just not pushing it. All right, I'm moving my picture around, but I'm trying to keep it so you can still see. As bumpy as the surface is, the gel matte medium has made it smoother. Now, some people might be asking, can you use Mod Podge? You can. My experience with Mod Podge, but it has been years, so they may have improved the formula, I don't know. But is I'll, I have issues with stickiness, particularly in a journal that I close. So it's, you know, layer on top of layer. And over time, I've had the experience of it yellowing. And, and, you know, I'm not talking about decades. So, yeah, I kind of stepped away from Mod Podge. But there's a lot of people, very successful people, 
that use it and love it. And so I'm just telling you my experience. Okay, we've got two more of these. I'll do this one first. But these green ones were gel plated. And then I have a stencil of just like the alphabet and some symbols. So I just took the black here and there, here and there, and picked up some of the symbols. There's no words in it. If you saw a word, well, that's fun. But I didn't intentionally get words in it. But I just on that piece, I was interested in, you know, kind of a texty look. I like random numbers and letters and scripts. All that. I think it adds interest to a collage. Okay. So let's take a look at her now. And as I say, what you see is often different than what I see sitting here because I'm so close and I have such lights. All right. This is a real fine Sharpie. I want to punch up her eyes just a little bit more. Yep. I think I'm going to fill that all the way in. Yep. Yep, I like that. I think I'm gonna work on her face a little bit more this way. Taking the old Sharpie. This is like a really fine one, but it's making a big difference. And I'm liking the difference. Mm hmm. I'm just adding little indications. I think that her ear completely vanished, and her earrings also. I'm gonna add some little indications of her hairline. I am happy with this. Yep. That's what it needed. I'm going to work on her hand a little bit. These little fingers there. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm very happy with this. Let me know in the comments what you think. And while you're there, consider giving me a couple of thumbs up and subscribe. Maybe share it with your friends, especially if you know someone that's doing the magazine prints. I'm giving it my signature. I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Thanks.